Um, so I'm Bambi Kitani, and I'm here to tell you some lessons that I've learned from Fulham Devi, the Indian bandit of spite. Is that not? <laughs> Thanks, Dean. <laughs> All right. So from Draupadi, who washed her hair in the blood of the man who groped her, to Sita, who had literally uh, decided to, that she'd rather die in a fire than spend one more day with her petty, jealous husband. I am so glad there's no hell in Hinduism. Um, Indian history is full of powerful, spiteful women, and I knew I had to talk about one of them tonight. So the one that I chose is somebody who would rob the rich, help the poor and the downtrodden. Um, she was so popular that instead of being hanged, she was actually made a celebrity and they even made a movie about her. However, Fulan Baby was very much not a Disney princess. And so for reals, if any of these things bother you, please, this is, this is the time to step out because it only goes downhill from here. She had a rough life and she did terrible things to other people as a result of it. Completely justified terrible things. Okay, so Fulan Baby's last name was Mala. Her first name actually means flower goddess. Um, so the Malas traditionally have been ferrymen in India, and she was born on the banks of the Chambal River, and for centuries, her ancestors had ferried people back and forth across this river. Now, this was all going great until this happened, right? So, yes, I managed to get ships into a talk about a landlocked bandit queen, Uttar Pradesh. So I was pretty proud of that. Um, <laughs> so after this bridge was built, there wasn't a lot of call for ferrymen. Which brings us to lesson number one. Engineering is terrible. <laughs> because Bulambe was poor and her family had no income, uh, she became a bandit queen. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm off by one. Whoops, whoops, sorry about that. Lesson number one, slides, yes. <laughs> Engineering turns sweet little girls into murderous bandit queens. All right. <laughs> There's more science coming, and yes, this is a map. So they tried farming, and unfortunately, Fulan Baby's uncle took all the good farmland and left her dad with this terrible little bit of land near some place called Gorha, which it's near places like Delhi, which are nice places, but it is not a nice place. In fact, when somebody was asked to describe it, an Indian official, he actually quoted Eliot's Wasteland, which generally not a good sign for farmland. <laughs> so 11-year-old Fulan Baby was like, come on, why does my uncle take all the good land and give my dad the bad land? And so, I'm just checking my slides now. Um, she staged a sit-in. 11-year-old Fulan Baby was political, and she knew that this might be how she gets what she wanted. Of course, this is India, and she was poor, which meant that not only did she not get what she wanted, she got arrested, her parents got arrested and beaten, and they forced her, they forced um, them to marry her off to make, stop her making trouble. So at 11 years old, Fulan Bebi was married off to a man named Putilal, who was 20 years her senior, this 31 year old. And I didn't find a picture of this piece of shit on the internet, <laughs> but imagine Roy Moore with a 10 and you pretty much got it, <laughs> right? So this man has very little to recommend him. Um, so normally when you're a child bride in India, people wait until you're like 16 or 70 to bring you to their house. She was 11, and he had her come now. He's like, I'll give you a bicycle to her parents in exchange. And they're like, I guess we have to. Um, so he raped her. He treated her very badly. You know, he starved her. She ran away. She ran away three times. And then eventually, he's like, fuck this, and left her on the banks of the Chambal River to starve. Now, happily, her last name was Mala, which meant that she was in with fishermen. And it turned out that some extended members of her family were on the river. They found her. They saved her. She went back home. And then things got even worse. So tiny little digression. Um, seriously? The rest was about a nim tree. 
Um, so, uh, neem is really, really cool, and I'm going to talk about it. Uh, it's proven to be an insecticide. Um, there are two compounds in the bark, acidectarian and nimbidin, that make it so that you can actually clean your teeth with it, and it kills bacterial gingivitis. And it is a uh, anti-carriogenic, -car anti-helminthic, anti-diabetic, antioxidant, astringent, antiviral, cytotoxic, and anti-inflammatory. And there are so many cool papers about this, including one that ties to Indian Atlantis, and I will give a talk about this one day because it's such a cool thing. But that's not what this talk is about. That talk is about terrible things. And this is her cousin, Mayabin, who, the son of the person who stole all of this land. And he decided that he wanted a piece of Fulan baby now that he's back in town. She said, no, and he's like, I'm gonna cut down that name tree. She's like, you can't do that. And so this uh, little girl, um, she was 4'10 at adult height. So imagine like 14 year old, you know, about yay high, kicking the crap out of four or five guys trying to cut down her daddy's tree. Um, she was doing pretty well until somebody hit her on the head with a rock. And the police, of course, did not arrest a guy. You hit her, they arrested her, they raped her, they got mad at her parents, a bunch of terrible things happened. And they were um, essentially forced to bring her home after essentially mortgaging their entire farm. And then she got kidnapped by bandits that her cousin paid for. Um, so, bandits, also known as dacoits and thugs, um, in English, in fact, our word thug actually comes from the Hindi thug. Um, dacoits comes from daku. We're all over this area, although they weren't gangs of Kali worshippers like the British would want you to believe. That was all made up by that guy. Um, so things went bad to worse. Uh, the leader of the bandits, Baba Gujar, terrible man, you know, well, I mean, she was raped all over the place, so just kind of assume that everybody raped her, unless I say otherwise. Um, yeah, no, not, not a happy story. Trigger warnings were real. Um, <laughs> so one guy, Wickramala, did not rape her. He actually saved her from this guy by shooting him in the head, but he was a lower class guy trying to take over a gang. And it went well for a tiny little bit of time, and then it went badly because he was down where Fulan Bibi was with the farmers and the makers and the servants, the Sudra class, whereas the other gang members were Kshatriyas or Thakurs up in the warrior king class. And warrior kings do not like being ordered around by farmers and makers, which makes no sense whatsoever, but that's the way India was and maybe is. So, Sri Ram and Lal Ram were two members of the gang that were Kshatriyas. They were the big dudes. They were powerful warrior kings by at least mental nature in some way. And they shot her lover Vikram in the head and proceeded to chloroform her, strip her, tie her to the bottom of a boat, take her to a village, gang rape her for three weeks, and then force her to walk out into the middle of the square to fetch them water naked and tied up which, humiliating, terrible, and you know, this whole time she's asking anybody in the village to save her. The one good thing about being walked out like that is somebody did. A priest saw her, rescued her, and she ran away to join other members of the gang who fled to a nearby village. The priest, of course, was killed. At this point, I don't know if you guys have noticed a spite meter that's been uh, going up and up and up, but now she was angry. <laughs> so about Sri Ram, she said, I wanted um, the dogs, can't quite read this. I wanted the dogs to devour him and uh, tearing at his flesh and gnawing at his bones. My only craze was for his blood. Which brings us to lesson number two. Hell hath no fury like a woman's, uh, heaven hath no rage, hell, yeah, love to hatred, nor hell of fury like a woman, gang rape, tortured, and humiliated. So she ran with a gang that she founded now, so it's all lower class people. And she and a man named Mansing found the village that she'd been assaulted. And they put together every man of higher caste in that village, lined him up and shot him in the head. Yeah, exactly, right? They had it coming. Um, so all of the 30 that she shot, 22 of them died, and the rest got the hell out of Dodge. And that brings us to lesson number three, which are parting words from her dead lover. Never kill 20. If you're going to kill, kill 20 and not just one. For if you kill 20, you're a legend. And if you kill one, you're a murderess. And she took those words to heart. <laughs> and now, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Dean.
Um, so now, here are 10 seconds of kittens, because I need it. I don't know if you do, but I need it. OK. Whew. Kittens. All right, everybody good? Back to the rage. Back to the rage. So she had a taste for blood now, and she hadn't found Sri Ram and Lalaram. They weren't in that village, and she was going to find them hell or high water. But in the meantime, she kidnapped high-class people and ransomed them, and she would go to villages dressed as an Indian policeman, and she would find the high-class man in charge and be like, you know what, my supervisor, he needs some girls. And they'd bring some low-class girls, and they would rape them. And when they did that, she, on a good day, would cut off their nose, like this dude up here. On a bad day, she would strip them, tie a rope around their necks, parade them through the village on all fours so that all the lower class girls get a good look, tie off their dick, or cut off their dick, tie it around their necks, steal all their widows, or steal all their wives' money, except for just enough to get them to the ER and back. And she did this all through India without getting caught, because who was going to turn this woman in? It made the government look bad, and so they let her surrender on her own terms. They let her surrender with eight years in jail for her gang, the land back for her dad, a government job for her brother, and she had to surrender only to Durga, uh, who's an Indian war goddess, and Gandhi instead of surrendering to the police. So she made out as a 25-year-old. She was an amazing bargainer. <laughs> she tried to marry um, after she was in jail for 11 years without trial. They let her out and you know, dropped all charges because, you know, why not? She's amazing, right? And she wasn't so good at it. Which brings us to lesson number four. Don't turn your back on a woman with a sorry. <laughs> right? Those people are up to no good. Um, and so she realized that, you know, she was only really good at killing people and killing people and being spiteful. And so she did the only thing that she could think of to do. She went to Parliament. <laughs> so Fulan Devi was the MP for Mirzapur, which is also in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Um, she was very, very popular. She was elected in 1999 for the Samajwadi Party. So this is how actually happening in our lifetimes. This is what India is like now. Um, in 2001, she was shot um, and killed by people who may have been rival gang members or may have been people in the government. We don't know. But one thing that I'd like you all to know is the Samajwadi Party fights against the Bharat Janatiya Party, who are India's very own nationalists. And that brings us to our final lesson of the night. No matter what, always fight Nazis. <laughs> and so... With that, <laughs> cheers, right? <laughs> I'd like to toast India's bandit queen, a spiteful, vindictive goddess, Fulan Devi. <laughs>